So uh, the last time we talked about um, Isaac, and we said Isaac um, is simply the information search and analysis skills. This is a model that we've added to the um, fundamentals so that right after the introduction to computer, you are able to browse the internet, you are able to analyze information you get from the internet, you are able to produce a full document of it. Also, you'll be able to learn how to work with Google Forms, work with Google uh, uh, Docs, you'll be able to work with all the applications that are associated with Google. Okay. The internet is a, com a computer-based global information system. The internet is composed of many interconnected computers. Okay, it is composed of many interconnected computers. All these computers are connected to each other in subnets, in circuits, like small, 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 small. And all these small, small computers are connected to each other. Okay, then we have the internet. Each network may link tens, hundreds, or even thousands of computers, enabling them to share information and processing power. Okay, in small organizations where we have uh, a small office setup, maybe in your office, there is a network there. If all these networks have computers, but have only one printer. That doesn't mean maybe you have about 10 computers. Does that mean you should get 10 printers for all these 10 computers? No. If your printing is such that uh, you can print from your end and then you can't you go pick it out elsewhere on the same uh, block then there is a need for you to share that expensive peripheral. Maybe that printer, to buy uh, 10 of it will be very expensive. And so you connect all these computers together so that that cost of buying printers for all the other nine computers will be what's eliminated. And that makes it very expensive to buy printers for all the nine other computers. Okay, so uh, in such situations, we say uh, the network helps to share uh, information and also uh, reduces the cost of what? Uh, high expenses on devices that uh, you have to buy for all other nodes on the, uh, on the network. Nodes is referred to you can use not for computers, you can use not for mobile phones, you can use not for laptops, you can use not for any other device that you can connect onto the network, okay? So uh, the network enables us to share information and expensive peripherals within the organization. The internet has made it possible for people all over the world to communicate with one another. Yeah, it is true. Because um, if I am here, I am chatting with you, um, Comfort. It is uh, because of the internet. That is why it is possible for me to chat with you, to communicate with you, you understand? Since the introduction of the internet, communication has been very easy and convenient. Okay, so when you compare that one to the traditional way of communication, like the radio, the television, if you want to send information across your, your, your platform or the group, it becomes very expensive. But with the introduction of the internet, it has made it very inexpensive. You understand, comparatively, it is very cheaper for you to what, send information on the network. Now we say the internet is not controlled by a particular 
uh, organization or body. Okay, so because of that, we say it is uh, it does not have a centralized distribution system. So when you look at maybe PCFM, PCFM has a centralized distribution system because uh, it is being manipulated from a particular source. Information that is sent on all PCFM channels is being directed from one particular source so that no one goes to PCFM and just broadcast any other information apart from what uh, they know it will be telecasted online. I hope you understand. So before you go online, you need to prepare the producers, the directors, all of them need to know what exactly we are putting up there. Because the moment you put it up there, that it goes in the name of Peace FM. That is why sometimes TV station owners or radio station, station owners, when you are doing a program and it doesn't favor someone, they can sue you or sue the uh, the owners of the TV or radio station. But when the internet sends an information that it is not pleasant or it is not suitable for everyone, who there, who are you going to sue? You're not going to sue anyone. You don't have any particular person that you want to sue. You like to sue the person. Okay, so we say the internet does not have a centralized distribution system. Okay, so we look at centralized distribution system versus the decentralized distribution system now. We realize that centralized distribution system, uh, information comes from a particular source and enters the public domain for viewers' consumption. The decentralized uh, distribution, the recipient of the information is not, is not centralized and monitored, okay? It's not centralized and monitored. So instead, an individual who has internet access can communicate directly with anyone else on the internet. Can communicate directly with anyone else on the internet. The person can post information for general consumption. You understand? So if I go online and I post an information lately, we'll be doing so many uh, postings. And there could be somewhere and we we'll post information on the internet, share it to everyone so that everyone has access to it. I hope you understand. So long as you have internet access, you can access all those information that has been processed. If you have internet access, you can also retrieve information on the internet. You can retrieve information on the internet. Internet uh, data that has been processed and put onto the internet can be viewed by anyone. Okay, you can do distant applications. You can use distant applications and services like we are doing right now. We are doing a distant application. We are learning online. So this has been possible because of the use of the internet. You can also do buy and sell. You can do buy and sell. We call it the e-commerce, the e-commerce. E is electronic. E means electronic. Comments means to buy and sell. And so you can do electronic buying and selling. That is what it meant. Okay. It also enables marketers to promote products and services to millions of potential customers through the WWW. Okay. So um, you are able to promote uh, your products online. Promotion simply means that you go and then you subscribe to a certain uh, uh, platform or a certain uh, uh, pre pre configured uh, channel. Then, as when I say pre configured channel, it simply means that a channel that when you put your product there, there have been some um, settings that will enable your products to go or to reach the exact people or the exact audience that you desire. I hope you understand. So there's that settings there. Now when you put your products 
in that channel, the system that has been made, uh, that has been designed, will push the data or your products to those particular kind of people, and they would buy your products for you. You understand? So you can do that with so many channels, like the uh, Facebook has one, Google has one, uh, Twitter has one, Instagram has it. You know them, you can mention a whole lot of them. So from this, you could realize that I have given you so many, you can, you can deduce so many advantages of the internet. You can deduce so many advantages of the internet. The internet has brought new opportunities to governments, business, and even education. Okay. The government used the internet for internal communication, distribution of information, and automated tax processing. The automated tax processing. You are in the ministry, so you know what I'm actually talking about. In the absence of the internet, hey, government, see now, hmm. the government will suffer. We currently have the GCNet. The GCNet, when you go to the ports, they use the GCNet. And GCNet, everything you do with GCNet is always online. Everything you do with GCNet is always online. So if you don't have the internet, how do you access your goods? How do you clear your product? How do you know the progress of your goods um, at the port? You understand? So all these things is made possible because of the use of the internet. In addition, of, in addition to offering uh, goods and services online to customers, businesses use the internet to interact with other businesses. You understand? So for instance, uh, I am a manufacturer. I am a manufacturer. I want suppliers. I want wholesale suppliers. So that when I product, I produce my uh, my goods or my uh, products, I can go directly to my suppliers and then supply to them. Or because of the introduction of the internet, I can easily locate uh, people I can supply to directly on wholesale. Because maybe I deal directly with the, uh, the manufacturer. So I am myself a wholesaler. I pick it directly. I can look for some people online and then push those goods to them directly. I hope you understand. Many individuals also use the internet for communication through electronic mail. So uh, here in our office, we do a lot of communication. Sometimes you receive mails through your email address uh, with the information that you need to access online. Sometimes the mails are sent to you directly. You get a link to those mails and then back you go. Most organizations use uh, email compulsorily. You must have an email account and it should be corporate email. You understand? It's not a Gmail account things. No, 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 no. You have the corporate email. So here you realize that students or no, um, schools at matrisoft.com often sends you email pad. That is what I know is authorized to send mails to students. You understand? We have an uh, info at matrisoft.com. So for here, I have a personal email, the uh, bosses at matrisoft.com. And because it's a corporate mail, when you send mails, it is recognized as such that you are at least in the corporate institution or the mail is coming from a corporate institution. You understand? It give you the credence that uh, you desire. However, if you have email addresses, the normal uh, social uh, email, like the Gmail, like the Yahoo, like the um, Outlook, blah, 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 all the email system that you have, you can send and receive email from your friends. You understand? If uh, you are applying for unemployment somewhere and uh, you, want to, you want to do it official, most companies request that you send a mail to, to them through your personal email so that when they want to communicate with you, they can also communicate to you through that email. 
All these things are made possible just because of the introduction of the internet. Now, many individuals also use the internet for communication through the email, like I said earlier on. And um, institutions where like the uh, TV and radio um, companies, for instance, they, they are supposed to go online when there is news somewhere, unless they are there physically, then that is fine, they can write their own news. But if they are not there and they are supposed to get feeds or uh, information from other sources, they must verify on the internet. So they go online and see if the information they are picking from the grounds is authentic. You understand? So they are able to retrieve news online. They are able to do research, research also online. They are able to shop online. You understand? Sometimes the last time I bought a blender for uh, my wife, and that blender is very good. You can do e commerce with it, you can buy things online. You can also sell things with it online. You can pay your bills online. Recently, ECG uh, has introduced the USSD so that on your phone, even without internet, you can even buy ECG credits. You can even buy um, ECG, you can pay your electricity bill. You can also pay your water bills. You can pay your DSTV. You can pay all of those things. You understand? You can do your online banking as well. So these are some of the benefits that is associated with online or the internet. I hope you understand. You can do online banking. Those of you with fat, fat, fat money in your account. When you are when you are locked somewhere, you can quickly transfer money onto your mobile. All these things can be done with the help of the internet. If someone requests, hey, Connie, Sally, I am broke. Can you send me some uh, money into my account? Connie can just transfer money into Moses' account sometime. And then I'll just go, hey, this electronic media here, it'll be easy. I hope you understand. So you can also listen to music online. You can do, you can watch uh, movies. You can play games. You can make phone calls. What's up? You can do calls with WhatsApp. You can do videos with WhatsApp. You can do Skyping, you understand? Where the person is far away from you, maybe in a different continent, and you're also in a different continent. So for instance, I am in Ghana here. I can communicate and see the person physically. Uh, the person, I can see the person in US. So we are in different continents. You understand? US is United States of America, uh, which is a different continent. I am in Africa. It's also a different continent. But I can view the person. I can see in real time what the person is doing at a time. All these things are made possible because of the use of internet. So educational institutions also use the internet for research and to deliver online courses and course materials to students. So sometimes we push some of the materials to you through Telegram and on WhatsApp and blah, blah, blah. You're blah. also able to retrieve those informations just because you have internet. So if you don't have internet, all these things cannot be made possible. I hope you understand. Any question? Any, any question? No, no. Okay. okay. So the use of internet too has grown tremendously since its beginning. The internet success arises from its flexibility. So it has grown with time from uh, the time of its introduction or its inception to date. There has been a very tremendous uh, growth. Instead of restricting components uh, component uh, networks to a particular manufacturer or a particular type. Internet technology allows interconnection of any kind of computer network. I hope you understand. So when I talk about computer network, like I told you earlier on, the 
the computer network is connecting computers to communicate with each other. And the main purpose for connecting them is to share information and expensive peripherals or processing power. Okay. Now, so long as I'm able to connect the computers together to communicate, and someone also is able to connect the computer to communicate, and these two networks are able to communicate with each other, we are on the internet. No network is too large or too small, too fast or too slow to be connected. So if maybe the speed of my network is 10 megabits per second, someone's speed is like 100 megabits per second. Another speed is like one gigabit per, se uh, per second. Another speed is like 10 gigabits per second. Another speed is like 100 gigabits per second. Cool. Then 100 gigabits per second and 10 gigabits per second, yeah, it'll be easy. Very soon we'll be getting things like one terabit per second. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now one yeah, you 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 just have to fly with your head to in addition when you are sending information. I hope you understand. So what it's trying to tell us is that no matter the speed of your network, you will still have an internet. Do you understand? You have an internet in any way. So no network is too fast or too slow, too big or too uh, small. I hope you understand. So who are those who uses the internet? Who are the um, who are those who provide internet to us? I've talked about what the internet is. I've talked about its advantage. I've talked about uh, uh, its advantage. So now I'm talking about who uses or who provides the internet? Who actually provides the internet? The internet is provided by a team of people we call the ISP the ISP, and I, ISP simply means internet service providers, okay? So usually what the ISP does is that they give you the service and then you, you pay usually at the end of the month, usually at the end of the month. Now, it has been broken down into small, 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 small packets for us so that you can, they can give you a service Instead of paying at the end of the month, you know, it, it has been broken down for you to pay like weekly, or it has broken down for you to pay like uh, daily, or even hourly rate. You understand? Sometimes within a certain session of the day or the night, then you pay for it. You understand? So it gets to a point that you be you 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 will be you be asked to pay your your internet on uh, uh, a period of like some minutes which will not be up to an hour it is possible you understand so that is how um, cheaper the internet has now become okay so uh, isp uses uh, what you call public access networks. ISP uses what you call the public access networks. And the public access networks, um, because ISP is after their service to the general public, uh, the network they provide is the, the PAN, the public access network. So in the United States, the ISPs are private companies. Okay, and in countries where the telephone service is a government regulated monopoly, the government often controls the ISP. The government often controls the ISP. Currently, uh, in Ghana here, it used to be a uh, hundred percent uh, monopoly of the government, but now the Vodafone company has taken uh, over. Not entirely, but 
uh, I think they have they have uh, forty percent, and the government has sixty percent. So it's not entirely for the government still. Okay. Now let's look at some devices that we can be used to connect the internet. Some of the devices that we can use to connect the internet. So we have a device like the computer, which is uh, a common device that we use often. So the computer can be used to connect the internet. The most common device used to connect the internet is a computer. A computer connects the internet with the help of a device called a modem. A modem. A modem converts the digital bit of a computer. Okay, the digital bit of a computer. It connects, it converts it to an audio tool. It converts it to an audio tool, which is then converted to an electronic signal. I hope you understand. Now, uh, modem modulates, modulates. When I say modulates, now nah, it it regulates. There, that is the term I can use right now. It regulates. That means it gives it, uh, it controls. Okay, it controls the uh, inflow of data that passes through it. The modem understands audio or a tone. The modem understands audio. The computer understands bits. They understand. It understands digital bits. And digital bits is just simply saying one and zero. Where one is uh, represent on and zero represent off. So when you look at any digital device where the power switch is, you will see one and zero on it. One and zero. Now the one, like I told you, you know, is on. It means on. Zero is off. So those of us who went to small school and we know small mathematics and they give you um, a small calculation in converting from binary to decimal uh, is it and uh, decimal so uh, that means that from from one and zeros you convert it towards maybe tens then from one and zeros you convert it to maybe uh, that is in base two right to maybe base five or base eight or base ten you understand that means that all the values that you have should go beyond two. It should go beyond two. When you are converting from base 10 to a, a, a binary digit, that means that your end result should not exceed one. Your end result should not exceed one. So in that case, you realize that all the values are going to get at the end of your result, it's going to be zero and one. When you start getting to, there's no more binary. I hope I understand. Now, if you are sending an information, like this thing I'm doing with you right now, I am speaking with you. It enters into the computer system. Now, it is up for the computer. The computer is supposed to understand zero and one because that is what it understands. It's a digital system. But you doing the receiving or you at the uh, receiving end, you are hearing exactly what I'm telling you right now. I hope you understand. So how is it done? How is it done? So in short, you have a modem at your receiving end. I don't know which device you are using as a modem, but your modem can be your phone. There is uh, a device in your phone that regulates, I hope you understand, it controls the inflow of data and the outflow of data. And that device is called the modem. The same thing applies to mine here too. Whilst I'm speaking into the computer, the computer has a device that should regulate the inflow and then the outflow of data. 
And so once I speak, before it gets to your end, the system modulates it. You understand? The system modulates it. So it would come to your end as um, a, a digital data, a digital data. A digital data is not like the voice. Voice is not digital. Voice is analog. So when it gets to your end, your computer or your uh, your modem that you are using would modulate it again. Then you hear it as what? The tone or the voice. I hope you understand. So that is the work of the modem. It regulates the, the data inflow and outflow. It regulates the data inflow and outflow. So I said, a modem converts the digital bits of a computer output to an audio tool, which is then converted to an electronic signal and passed over telephone lines to be decoded by a modem attached to the computer again at the receiving end. A web browser is also required by the user to read and view web pages and websites on the internet. So now it doesn't end there. Before you can get feedbacks from the computer, we understand, over the network, you need a browsing application or a web browser application. When we're dealing with softwares, I told you something that um, the interface or the software that exists as an interface between the computer and the web or the computer and the internet is your web browser application. So in the absence of the web browser application, your computer cannot access the internet in short. In the absence of the web browser application, the internet, your computer cannot access the internet, which means that you, after getting your computer, the second thing you have to look at is a web browser application. So what are the examples of web browser applications? You have one, you have them on the computer. So we have the, uh, let me show you some, let me share my screen so that I can see some of the web browser applications on my screen. I hope you can see my screen now. Can you see my screen? Connie, can you see my screen? Yes, I can. Okay, sure. Okay, so uh, this here is a web browser application. This is Microsoft uh, Edge. This is Microsoft Edge. It's a web browser application. This one too here is a web browser application. That is um, uh, Google Chrome. It's a web browser application. Let me see, I think I have three or so on the computer. I have Mozilla Firefox. I have Mozilla Firefox. This is also a web application. Uh, sorry, a web browser application. Then we have other ones too, like uh, Netscape Navigator. Netscape Navigator. To navigate is to surf, okay? To navigate is to surf the internet or to browse or to move around the internet, okay? So all these softwares are internet web browser applications, internet web browser applications. So you are supposed to get at least one of them, at least one of them, so that you'll be able to browse information online, okay? Another device that you can use to um, connect the internet is a device we call the GPS. The GPS. The GPS. It is a wireless system providing internet access. A GPS is the short form of what? General packet radio service. General packet radio service. That is the short form of GPS. It is a system that provides immediate and continuous access to the internet from wireless devices such as a cell phone. Today, Today, I don't think the GPS is, 
the GPS has been modernized. I hope you understand it has been modernized. So the GPS access is, um, has been enhanced. When, uh, as we go forward, I'll tell you the new uh, uh, services that we have on the phones. The GPS was once used in the, in the YAM phones or the earlier phones that were created. Another device you can use to connect the internet is a telephone, the telephone. So the telephone instruments that sends and receive voice messages. So the telephone instruments receive voice and um, data, you understand? It receives voice and data. Now, um, the data bits of the data bit that are attached to the telephone is made possible because of the modem. So if you understand the concept of the modem, what it does, you realize that the data really fit into the telephone device. So the telephone converts speech and data to electrical energy, which is sent great distances, okay? Modern technology has made the telephone much more portable, convenient, and versatile. I understand. So another device that can help you to connect the internet is the mobile devices. Like a mobile device like the palm tops. You know what the palm top is? Palm top is a handheld device. Let me go online and see if I can show you how a palm top looks like. Uh, one minute. Palm top looks like. Uh, palm top. So this is how a palm top looks like. These days, you don't really see them in town again because they've been uh, replaced with uh, our mobile phone. So if someone is selling this device in the market today, I don't think anyone would buy them. We, we used to call them the organizers. The organizers. See how it looks like. These are like palm tops. Okay. We have laptops. We have laptops. Then we have mobile phones. These are all used to connect the internet. These devices are mobile devices because you can access the internet everywhere. So long as you have an access to the internet, you can access the internet everywhere. Okay. Now, I've talked about the advantages Let's talk about the disadvantage as well. So in spite of the numerous advantages of the internet that I just spoke about, it has brought about very bad perception as a bad technology ever introduced to the world. That is what people think. Now, because of the internet, it, it has breeded internet fraud. It has breeded internet fraud. So the most serious threat to the integrity and authenticity of computer uh, information come from the uh, from those who have been um, entrusted with usage privileges and yet commit computer fraud. So for instance, Connie, you are my friend. I have entrusted certain um, rights to you. You should have access to my laptop and my laptop has access to my bank account. It has access to uh, my, my personal files and folders. I hope you understand. So all these things are on the laptop. Then I realized that at a point in time, you started taking some money off my account and putting it into your account. That is a share fraud. That is fraud. So when you start doing that now, you are considered as a computer fraud. Or 
we are taking advantage of the files that I have on my computer, and we are taking advantage over them. You understand? Uh, you have a, a, your certificates in the computer, and I'll just view your certificate number, the way your, your, your certificate is. Maybe I'm also called uh, Barbara Ponsa. Barbara Ponsa. I'll just edit your name. Okay. Uh, comfort, comfort, uh, uh, change comfort, and I'll put Barbara Ashawati over there. You understand? Use a certificate number. Then I am trying to uh, uh, impersonate myself. I hope you understand. All these things are computer frauds. Just because I have, you have entrusted those uh, uh, the usage rights to me, I'm taking advantage over them. I hope you understand. Spread of viruses. Spread of viruses. When you go online and you're not careful, you would, you, your computer would contract viruses. What are viruses? Viruses are softwares. They are softwares that are intended to destroy your files and uh, operating system. The main rationale behind the virus is to destroy your variable documents and your operating system. So when you go online, these files are designed and kept on the internet. And usually they are, they, are, they, they, they are disguised in a particular way that they look very attractive online. You understand? Open me and get, uh, click here and get rich. Click here and get hooked up. Click here and do this, click here and do that. They, they make the thing so juicy so that you should just click. Sometimes it bumps on the screen, bam. You click anywhere to not, it will not um, activate unless you click on them. When you click on them, then bam, the virus is spread onto your computer everywhere. Start destroying your files. Start clearing your, 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 your personal data and stuff. If a virus ever enters your computer and start destroying your files, eh, you'll get to understand what I'm talking about. They are very, 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 very notorious. They are very notorious to understand. They can be very irritating, very, very, very irritating. Okay. It is expensive. Now, this time I'm saying it is expensive here because initially I was telling you that comparatively it is cheaper. I was comparing it to uh, the traditional way of communication like the radio and then TV. Now, it is expensive here because, you know, the ISP is typically. Um, uh, charge monthly fees for internet access, and they often charge additional fee for broadband installation. So those of us that we use a broadband installation you know, or setups, um, you will have to subscribe, okay, for a service, and uh, that is just a service. You have to you have to buy gadgets for the setup as well. These charges often make it very expensive. How do you understand to get your internet? How do you understand? And so uh, that is that is why it is very necessary for us to know what it really, really, really entails. Now, one of the disadvantages that we can talk about is um, the spread of social devices, uh, social vices, the spread of social vices. Now, you would bear with me that pornography, films, magazines, writings, photo, uh, photographs, or other materials that are sexually explicit, uh, explicit and intend to arouse sexual uh, incitement 
in their audience. Most, of, most internal users purposely visit the internet with the rationale of visiting websites with pornographic pictures and videos. But then this makes them practice what they see, which leads them to unwanted pregnancies, STDs, premarital sex, et cetera, et cetera. I hope you understand. Okay. Any, any other question? Any other question? Any question? The floor is open now. It's 9.38. We've got to wrap up with our lesson for today. Any question about the internet? Any question about the internet? Okay, let me ask a simple question. And I will direct this question to Comfort. Connie, can you unmute your mic, please? What would happen to you if there were no internet today? Me. Yes, you. What would happen to you if there were no internet? I'll just read. you just read? Yes. Read from where? It's not like, oh, a book. You, re you read from it's a book? It's not like, mm, and it's not like, um, I don't do any online uh, buying and selling. Okay. So my business won't be affected or anything. Okay. So your mom, your mom sells on, uh, let's say your mom sells in the market. What does your mom sell? Provisions. Provisions. Okay. So maybe with these provisions, you can target some few items that your mom, you would wish your mom to push those items. For instance, those items are quite expensive. For instance, like uh, maybe your mom sells naan, lactogen. Okay. <laughs> I hope you understand, lactogen, uh, serilac. Okay, maybe rice, uh, ice, uh, sugar cubes. Mm -hmm. You understand? So in order to assist your mom push this uh, products to go faster, you can just package them for her. Maybe one rice, one lactogen, one champagne, one, you know, the hamper style. Then you put a price tag on it. Then you go online, then you sell. When you start doing that one, two, three, and people start buying from you, oh, this product looks good. If I buy, maybe there's a whole a package of um, items that I will need in the house. Then you start buying. When you go home and there is no internet for you to market a product that you've been, you've been, you, 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 you had wished to sell, then you, you will now realize the importance of the internet. You will not go and read. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so. So our own, my sister does it for my mom. Okay. But it's not like Tampa style. She sells normal, normally. We pre or dine and they deliver it to you. I see. So on days that uh, on days that the internet is bad, we complain and say, ah. mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's be like by this time I have messages, I have to go and reply. Mm -hmm. the customers will think that I'm not minding them. Mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's right. So the internet, you know, if you are used with uh, to the internet, not a tikwa, oh, why I bet she show or no? I say, I say, you're know, all that. You see, so that is how it has become. Me, for one, everywhere I go, there should be an internet service. There should be an internet service. I was in a very remote um, area for like almost three weeks. 
almost three weeks, and I didn't get it likely at all. I didn't get it likely. I I managed to get to to travel every day to a, a, a place that I can get network at least, so that I can send and receive uh, information from people around. I hope you understand. Uh -huh. So with the introduction of the internet, it has been very helpful, especially to businesses. Especially to businesses. Okay. That is up for us today. I want to wrap up and then continue again on Wednesday. Any other question? If you have any question, you can just drop, drop it. Any question? Any question? Okay, so I think in the absence of questions, uh, we'll close here and continue on Wednesday. Okay, so good night to you and enjoy your sleep. Goodbye.